We're live. Oh, Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, baby. Welcome to Cooking with Nene. And Burry. We're at our guest. We're remote tonight. We have a secret guest chef. So, without further ado, as you can see, we've got all our ingredients in front of us. And without any further ado, we're going to drop the suspense and show you who our guest chef is tonight. And it's my baby daughter, Allison. Here she comes. Hi. Hey, sweetheart. Hello. Yesterday Hello. was her birthday. 34 years ago, yesterday was a memorable day. She was a little blue baby. Well. So, uh, anyway, sing her happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Allison. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Yay. Yay. Okay. Hello. <laughs> but, but, Allison, I got to do this before we get started. I just got to say. I'm I'm really proud of this girl. I mean, she's she's um came a long way and from my know, troubled youth. Yeah, from the troubled <laughs> youth to and what's your title now? I'm director of Arrow University. Woo! She's a director, people. So um, tell a little bit about yourself and what you do. And if you need bugs killed in your house, call Arrow. <laughs> and they do it outside. Call too. They do. Arrow. Cares. Arrow cares. <laughs> so yeah, I'm the director of Arrow University, so I work for Arrow, Arrow Exterminators. I've worked for there for 11 years. Um, I started working at Arrow um, as an administrative professional in one of our service centers, um, calling and scheduling termite renewals, uh, inspections in people's houses, and then um, over the course of many, many years, kind of moved my way up through a variety of roles and then um, came over to our training department which is the department that I uh, have the opportunity to lead now uh, to create administrative training so I did that for a number of years before it kind of morphed into some other things uh, from a training perspective developing training delivering training and now I uh, have the great pleasure of leading an entire team of 13 people on the Air University training department um, and I've been doing that for five-ish years, something like that. So, um, yeah, Arrow is a great company to, to work for. for all all the the number one top workplace in Atlanta. How about Arrow that? Arrow. Yes. Very so, good. Here we go. Her. Um, this is this is a little dish that Allison's known for, and it it, it holds a special meaning to her. And uh, I'm gonna let her explain this as well. Um, how this, how she came up with this dish, and where it came from, and um, you know, it's um, a good sentimental dish for her. And we hope you know sh her sharing it with you. It'll be a good, easy dish for y'all to make for dinner for your family. So, Allison, tell them about. Tell them the name of your dish and tell them about it, and we'll get started. Okay, I'm gonna step around and get behind the camera. Okay, and um, we check mark to see who texted me. I want to hope. So if y'all hear some children, my uh, dad didn't mention we were supposed to have another guest chef, uh, my son Liam, who um, was supposed to help us, but he has decided that playing outside was a better idea. Than cooking in the kitchen. So he's outside with his friends, but they may or may not be in or out. In or out. So if you hear children, I apologize. Um, but so the dish that I am making is called chicken broccoli casserole. There's so many varieties of, of chicken broccoli casserole. Uh, this one specifically came from my late aunt Susie, who passed away about uh, six, almost seven years ago, unfortunately. And um, she lived with me and my sisters for a time growing up, her and my cousin, Sean. And she cooked this meal. I remember it was snowing outside. And um, 
I was so disgusted by it. I thought it was like she said, it's called curry chicken casserole. Actually, there's curry in it. So if you don't like curry, I don't know how you'll feel about this. But just don't uh, put the curry in it. You don't have to put the curry in it. But then you'll have a lot of Miracle Whip flavor. Um, <laughs> so she, uh, so she had cooked it for for us. It was snowing outside, and that, that's the kind of memory I always have. Is I remember it being like a warm dish that we had when it was cold Comfort outside. Food. Yeah. And I came in from playing outside. I remember just feel like my, my cheeks were hurting because they were just wind, uh, what is the? Wind burnt. Wind burnt. And she said, oh, I need this chicken broccoli casserole. Here, try it. And I was like, what? Like, no, that sounds disgusting. And then she said, just chicken try fingers. it. Just chicken try fingers in French fries. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what she would eat. So she said, just try it. And I did. And I was like, I'm one of those, I'm stubborn, I'm a Taurus. So I don't like to admit. So is Murray. <laughs> oh I don't like to admit um, when I'm like wrong or when someone tells me to do something I don't really like doing it. So she gave it to me and I tried it and I was like, okay, like that's actually pretty good. Um, I don't think I admitted it immediately that I did indeed like it. And um, as an adult, it's something that I started making. Uh, when I had a family and things like that and I put my own spin on it uh, it's a little bit different now the way that I make it than the way that my aunt Susie made it and you can put your spin on it yes um, it's an but, easy dish to modify yes it is and so I'll kind of talk about some of that stuff as we go through it like what you can do differently uh, and how I've made it into a dish that uh, you can do during the weeknight and not take a lot of time uh, I will say my six-year-old, almost seven-year-old, wild, uh, does not enjoy this meal. Um, <laughs> so if you have a picky eater, it might not be their favorite, but uh, the adults generally like it. Um, also, I've added some different ingredients, and we'll kind of talk about that. It's really one of these things that you can add things or take away things that you don't like necessarily. Um, just depending on what your particular tastes are. Um, so it's called curry chicken broccoli casserole. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is that? Becky, we're in a lot more country than she is. That's why she doesn't sound as sudden. <laughs> they want to know why you don't sound like us. Well, I can turn I can turn it on if you want me to. Yeah, you can. I can talk. On. I can talk southern if y'all want me to talk southern, but I. Try to turn it off when I'm talking in front of the camera. <laughs> I do too. Oh, can't you tell? Please. Can't you tell? Um, I do. Right, let's, let's get going on the camera. Okay. Right. All right. What did I tell you? Oh. Okay. So the first, so the ingredients here. You gotta have cheese. This is gonna be your topping. Um, this is about four cups of cheese. But if you um are like me, I don't I don't measure a whole lot with this. So it's about half a bag of like one of the big old bags or two bags of the smaller bags. Four, four cups. Four cups, essentially. Um, I've also got some noodles here. Some people don't like the noodles. If you're not a noodle fan, you don't have to add the noodles. Um, I have been really liking these particular noodles. They're called Banza, Banza. Uh, penne made from chickpeas, okay? You don't necessarily have to use these. You can go use good old fashioned Regular noodles, whatever noodles you like, you can use those. Um, my sister, Lindsay, does not like noodles at all in this casserole because that's not, that was something I added. My, my Aunt Susie did not put that in her casserole. It was just chicken and broccoli and the sauce that we're going to make. Um, but I feel like it's more of a meal if you add noodles. But my sister doesn't like it. So if you don't like noodles, you don't have to add noodles. You can double up on broccoli or double up on chicken if you'd like it that way too. Or you can go um, to Lindsay's house and have it. Yes. My sister makes me make half and half, half new, half with noodles, half without noodles. These particular noodles, I like them because they're a little bit less on the carb count. If you're in, if you're, you know, thinking about your carbs, I mean, it's still not great. I mean, it's 48 net, 48 grams of net carbs, which like if you're on like a keto, you way surpass your limit there. But uh, it's different from, what does that say? Oh, that says 40 grams. Okay, well, shoot. Uh, <laughs> this, this says on the back 
that normal no average pasta has 71 grams but um but Kroger Man has but Kroger Man has 40 so I've not done my myself any favors so great um <laughs> all right so the first thing that you want to do is cook your chicken um there's two ways you can do it you you can get chicken breasts um you can either get regular chicken breasts two of the big ones will work I really like the thin sliced ones so I use about four of those as opposed to the big thick ones. You'll want to cook those first. If you're doing this during the weeknight, it might be better for you uh, to get it done quicker. Um, I have in the past gotten a rotisserie chicken and just cut that up instead. So I don't have to worry with the baking of the chicken because that kind of is the one of the time consuming parts of it. <laughs> I, for this particular one, bake the chicken beforehand. Um, so you're going to want to bake your chicken. While your chicken's baking, you want to make your sauce so your sauce and for y'all southern folks out here look i feel you miracle whip is not a southern mayonnaise and blue plate. I, blue plate is the way to go however in this particular recipe if you use blue plate you're gonna regret it yeah this has the the tanginess that you need to kind of cut the the curry um so make sure that you use miracle whip so you're going to take an entire uh, 15 fluid ounce jar of Miracle Whip and you're going to put that into a bowl with a spatula here. We got anybody watching? Yeah, we got a couple watching. There's Sandy Shope and Corey Cagle, your cousin, and, hey, Corey. and Deb Montanaro. Hey, Deb. And of course, Becky was watching. Not not our Becky, but another Becky. We only got three Becky people watching. No, we got like twenty people. Oh. Twenty one. All right. So you're gonna want to scoop all the mirrors out. Yeah, I know it might, last drop. it might hurt your soul a little bit to buy Miracle Whip, but you got to do it. Um, I'm gonna step off here and open. Um, you've got to also get a family size thing of cream of chicken. So I'm going to open that really quickly. Well, and while she's opening the can, uh, this little girl right here, um, as a child, she had no fear. And uh, we were just talking about it uh, earlier. And uh, growing up, these kids growing up, uh, my dad, their grand, Papa Cagle. Everybody knows him, Papa Cagle. And... Um, he had, he always had, we always had horses growing up, and but he had this, he had Pete and Mighty Man, and these grandkids, I mean, they were riding Pete from the time they were, I mean, he was up, they were old enough he could set them in the saddle. <laughs> these, these girls were riding the horse, but, uh, but boy, we used, Papa used to put her on, the, on Pete when she was probably about Liam's age, six or seven, and just tell her, told her to hold on to that. that. He taught me how to ride it. Yeah. Oh, she she's taught me how to ride it. I've been riding a horse since I was probably about four. Right. At that point. <laughs> I knew how to ride a horse. But Pete both both English off. and Western. But Pete would take off, run into the one end of the pasture and back. And my mama, she would be screaming, red, red. Not every, not every time, only when the horse got out of control. Right. But I used to try my very best to make the horse go as fast as I could. Oh, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, it has been one misstep and this, this child would have been maimed for life. But I asked her, I said, would you let Liam get on that horse now? And uh, kind of make you think. But it, it, we had, they had a good, you know, a lot of good memories with Papa. And, uh, well, and Papa was a lot less fearful of horses because he had grown up around them and was you he was riding horses at that age. Yeah. So that was a normal thing. Uh, I had a lot of fun on the horses. It was yeah. a great childhood memory riding the horses. Just laughing her little head off. Yes. Going fast as they go. Well, do you want to tell the story about how the horse went bananas the one time? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember something. Go ahead. Well, the horse. So I was riding Pete. Papa would put me on the horse and let me just go to town. He would just let me ride as long as I wanted to ride. And so I was riding in, in the pasture <clears throat> uh, on their house on Cox Road, which is now a neighborhood. And I would just ride and ride and ride and ride. 
And well, uh, tell the story. I'm just going next. Oh, okay. Well, we got to add the curtain too. But um, one day, Pete, I don't know what happened. I lost control. He went a little, <laughs> little wonky. And he um, decided that he wasn't going to listen to me anymore. <laughs> and he just started, he was bucking a little bit. He was going kind of bananas. And Grandmama was in the garden. And she was saying, oh, Red, get her, get her. Papa was concerned, but also laughing a little. Uh, I was laughing hysterically. I had no control over the horse at all. He trampled all through the garden. Uh, finally, Papa got control of him. And then the second Papa let go of the reins, he went boom, bananas again. So it was a thing, and it was fun. I enjoyed it. And she's so how much? Oh, okay. So next, okay, you got your your mayonnaise, you got your cream of chicken. You're gonna add curry. Okay, so I'm like a she's big a curry, curry fan, now. so I put a lot of curry. I kind of tested it earlier today. Um, I put about four tablespoons. Ooh. Of curry. That's some curry. If you don't like curry that much, don't put that much curry. If you don't like curry at all, don't put curry. You can put other spices if you want. Right. Um, but curry to me also really helps with the tanginess of the Miracle Whip. It kind of cuts down on the tanginess. So I'm actually not going to measure it, um, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, and I just use the big old thing on here and I just. She's talking country now. The big old thing. The big old. <laughs> it comes out every once in a while. So I just dump a whole bunch in there, and usually I'll do this a couple of times where I'll I'll dump a bunch and yellow, then I'll taste is it. Yellow it. curry. Cindy Show wants to know if it's uh, yellow curry. This is just curry powder. Kroger brand. Kroger brand. Sometimes I'll get the or organic brand, but it's just regular curry powder. And so I'll just mix this all up, and then once I have it mixed up, I usually will give it a little taste. Um, so really to me, I think the original recipe was like one tablespoon of curry powder, um, but I put a lot more of that. They're also in the original recipe, um, she would cut it with lemon juice. Um, I don't put lemon juice, I just dump that curry in there. So um, I usually will give it a taste. No. And for me, it's, it still tastes too mayonnaise-y. So I don't want it to taste mayonnaise or cream of chicken -y. That sounds like a flossy is in there. <laughs> so I'll put another Good healthy. Good night. Yep. I'll put another healthy dose of, of curry in there. I usually do this two or three times until it gets to the flavor that I like for it to have. But again, it's whatever flavor you like. If you don't like that much curry, then don't. don't. Oh. There's times that I've fed this to people and they're like, oh, curry. Um, but me and my sisters, we we like them. Some we curry. like the curry. Um, so again, I'll taste it. No, it needs, it needs a little bit more. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I know it's a lot, but as I said, it's like four tablespoons of curry. So to me, it's done when I don't get that as much of a tang from the Miracle Whip. And it's kind of a healthy balance between the tang and the curry. And you can see it turns it turns very yellow. yellow. Very yellow. Yeah, there you go, Cindy Show. It's yellow. Yellow. <laughs> yellow. Okay. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Perfect. So then, oh, I need to put this. So, okay. Also, weeknight hack is use the steamed broccoli you can use steamed broccoli I, I always use it even if it's not in a weeknight because i don't want to steam broccoli on the stove top but if fresh veggies are your thing and you'd rather steam your vegetables go right ahead it's just gonna take you longer to do so i'm gonna pop this into the microwave i probably should have done that a few minutes ago um and just follow the instructions on the back it's actually gonna take about six minutes so there's that um oh my chicken let me get my chicken um, so, just a little shout out to, just, um, invite all your friends, folks, share, do one of those, uh, what are you, uh, view parties or whatever. Watch yeah, a watch party. party. Oops, sorry, y'all. Uh, invite all your friends. We appreciate everybody that tunes in to us. And, uh, next, <laughs> next, next 
week, next week, next Thursday night, you go ahead and be mad. Okay. Okay. While I'm talking. Okay. Next week, um, we'll be back at our house, and I'm going to be making me and Mur Murray and I will be making um, fried apple pies. I've got to uh, go up to Jay Moore Farms one day this week, next week, get some dried apples. But I'm um, going to be making the applesauce and the pie crust, and uh, we're going to be making fried apple pies. That was one thing, Grandma and Boy, I tell you what, she could make some good fried apple, make homemade applesauce. It was just so delicious. Put that homemade applesauce on a hot little biscuit. Um, Pretty good too, but anyway, that's next next Thursday. Six, uh, apple sauce Thursday. or apple butter? Make apple sauce. She made so she made apple butter too, which was out of this world. And pear preserves and apple jug. My mama was it, some more woman, some more cook, and some more grandmama. What <coughs> what she say? Ooh, what a pretty grandmama! <laughs> Speak up. What? What'd you say? Speak up. That's because that microwave is going. <laughs> so just so y'all okay, know what ahead. I'm doing here. I'm getting in on this action. Okay, you want to help yeah, tear sure. up some chicken? My hands are clean. Okay, so there's, like I said, you can do this with rotisserie chicken and just cut it up. Um, or you can do what I, I made this earlier, and so now I'm just shredding the chicken. Now make sure you don't get any yucky. I know the yucky pieces. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know the power <laughs> I know me some So, <laughs> that's one thing I make that'd sure there's no piece. yucky pieces in it. That'd be a yucky piece. That's a yucky piece. I don't want a yucky piece. Um, so, with a rotisserie chicken, obviously it's a little bit quicker because you don't have to cook it. These are pre-cooked uh, and they are cold. They've been in the fridge. But that's a yucky piece. Um, and if you're not using noodles, you can double up on the chicken, or if you're a broccoli fan, double up on the broccoli uh, just to make it more of a meal. Um, but I use about four of the, the small pieces of chicken. Four chicken breasts? Yes. Well, if it's, or use a pack of two that are thick. These are the thin sliced ones. I prefer those. Or a whole rotisserie chicken. Or a whole, or a whole most, small. the good meat. In other words, not, you don't like the dark meat. She don't like no dark meat. Oh, honey. Hey, if you like the dark meat, put it in there. I like me some dark I'm meat. Not a, I'm not a dark meat fan. Um, but then, so usually I just, I just tear it up, and then I'll kind of go back in through once I've got all my chicken in the dish and just tear them up into smaller pieces a little bit um, just so that they're like bite-sized pieces of chicken. Well, you could use a knife and cut more. You can if you're that stuff if, you have to wash. If you're impatient and your chicken comes out of the oven and you don't want to wait for it to cool to use your fingers, I've absolutely uh, used my use a knife in a fork before and cut it up into smaller pieces. Is that a bad piece um, or something? I'm not a fan of the rest of these pieces. That one too. What's wrong with that? One? That's fine. Okay. My my husband says I I waste a lot of uh, meat and chicken and things like that because. I'm super picky about uh, what kind of chicken I eat, but like I'm like me. So if it's hard for me, if, if it's hard for me to tear apart, I'm not. I'm not in it. Mm. <laughs> Sand, it's hard. It's Cindy hard. says thighs rock. Ah, hey, then, I bet then, you. Then put them in your casserole. That's right. I like it. Some thighs. I don't like it. So then you end up Here, with about this here. much chicken. Um, uh, again, you can put more or less, whatever floats your boat. Um, that's got about a minute left, but I'll go ahead and put my noodles that I already pre-made. Uh, again, I use a whole box of this, or you can use about three quarters of a box of this. One of the things that I was telling Dad and Mary Jane that I like about this recipe too is that I had a bunch of like partially used noodles in my pantry. And so one that I pre-made for you guys to see, uh, I just used kind of like a, a mixture. A mixture of different noodles. Kenny noodles, elbow, yes. elbow macaronis, 
It's got all kinds of different things. So I'm gonna go ahead and normally, these have been sitting here for a minute, so they're a little, little bit more stuck together, but I'm gonna put these in here and kind of break them apart. My uh, broccoli is about to be done. And so I feel like with a normal casserole, the, the original recipe, you're supposed to layer it with chicken, broccoli, sauce. Chicken, broccoli, sauce, cheese, breadcrumbs. I don't do that either um, because it all, in a, it, like, it all just ends up blending together anyways. Um, you can have, yeah, the pears, they're in the, um, look in the knife block over there. They all, it all just kind of ends up blending together to me anyways. So I do it in probably for, for me, the easiest way and the less time consuming way. And I just, just dump it all. it all together. It's all going to end up in the same place. Now I will say with the broccoli, um, again, cause I want it to be bite sized. I take a fork and I kind of chop up the, the bigger pieces. You could take your scissors. You could take your scissors, but, um, those scissors probably aren't clean enough for me to do that. But if you got clean kitchen scissors, you can do that. Um, but I just like to kind of chop it up a little bit so that it's bite sized. Um, I have in the past also used broccoli, um, chopped broccoli. So it's a lot smaller. And so then I take my spatula here and I kind of just stir it all together so it's evenly distributed. And so, whoop. At this point, you just do a lot of stirring. And so then you take your sauce mixture that you made and you just dump it all on top. Oh, and by the way, you probably want to have your oven preheated at this point uh, to 450. And you're going to put it in there for about 20-ish minutes. Really, to me, I just... To be honest, I don't ever really check the time. I just check on it periodically to see when it's done. Hot and bubbly. And <laughs> yeah. Um, probably no longer than, than 20 minutes. And then sometimes while I'm waiting, if I have extra noodles, I dip it in the sauce and eat it. <laughs> Do you like No. <laughs> Lick the bones. Yeah. It's really good. Um, okay. So then you're just going to mix it all together. So I'm not layering. I'm just mixing this whole thing together until it's evenly incorporated. This would have been a good firehouse meal to feed a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. And I make it, and I'm probably going to make it, it's a, it's a chicken, chicken casserole, but it's um, made with um, um, like golden chicken. And I forget, dang, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I made it, so I... But I'm on, that's, that's one of um, my go-to dishes at the fire station is the chicken casserole. All right, so I've got, a kind of, I've got it all mixed together. You're going to kind of just smooth it out, make it look all pretty. Make sure everything's kind of laying down flat. So then you're going to add your cheese. Four cups. So yeah, this is four cups. Of sharp sharp cheddar mm -hmm. now as I have this out though I'm kind of like mm, nah, might not be enough more. cheese so <laughs> let me get some more cheese you think you got enough cheese add a little more you need the top the, the cheese I feel like is one of the things that really makes the dish too so you need a lot of cheese and it needs to it needs to very very clearly cover the entire top of your casserole Tiffany Payne said, Coach Nathan, best softball coach I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Richardson, <Yeah>. hi. <laughs> hi, hey, Tiff. That's sweet. We had some good times back playing softball, didn't mm -hmm. we? Cindy Shope said she would break down and get her some, ma some Miracle Whip. I know, it's hard. It's hard. But I promise you. Because I was going to question when we went that. on family vacation. And made, she made her grandfather go to like three different grocery stores in Florida to find blue plate mayonnaise. You will never catch me putting whip, Miracle Whip on a sandwich. You got that right. Absolutely not. Blue plate all day, every day. Um, okay, so you got your cheese on. Then you're going to take breadcrumbs. 
Um, this, these are plain breadcrumbs, but I've also used like Italian breadcrumbs. And again, like you can add other seasonings to this. If you want to add like onion powder, garlic powder, wh whatever seasoning makes you happy, do it. Put Make some it your own. Cajun seasoning, put yeah. some black pepper flakes, whatever you want. <laughs> you can put whatever you want. So, but the breadcrumbs, the cheese and the breadcrumbs, okay. The breadcrumbs are important because it makes it that crispy, mm. melty, cheesy goodness. Yeah. But you don't want to put too much because if you put too much, then you just have like a big pile of breadcrumbs. So I usually just take it straight from the container and I just kind of gently sprinkle it onto the casserole. Not super, super thick. You can still see the cheese, but you're just kind of putting a light dusting of um, breadcrumbs. I try to get around the edges really well too because those are the best because they get a little burnt and it's delicious. So you kind of get around the edges here. And so then it ultimately, can they see? I'm gonna bring the camera. Right, camera. Looks Look like that. this. that. Isn't that beautiful? And like that. Beautiful. And then you're going to put it in the oven. And Marion, that's chicken, uh, curry chicken and broccoli casserole. We're going to put it in the oven. And look here. Yes. We have one. Already made. Pre-made. That's what it looks like when it's all done. Yes. Yeah, so you want the kind of, to me, like the mm -hmm. kind of browning that you have on the top is... Delicious. You can see I kind of got a little too heavy with the um, breadcrumbs right there, but it's delicious. A little well, brown. Let's, let's uh, spoon oh. this up a plate. Yeah. Have a little taste. Yes. I have a little story to tell myself. Well, come over here and tell you a little story. I'm going to tell you a story. Hey, Becky Wiley. See, Becky, Becky, oh, I've got two <laughs> Beckys. Sorry about that. Got my other Becky confused. I got two Beckys. I'm a lucky. I just need a little sliver. Child's portion. Well, that doesn't exist in chicken broccoli casserole world. So to see what you want. Thank you. Yeah. That will be yours because that one's. Okay, you want, you want like that. Much. That's perfect. Okay. Yes. Whoops. Because you know I'm counting the points. I know. Let me get, uh, I got to get a, right here. I'll get you a What's your thing? Well, um, I'm trying, I was trying to think of my best Allison oh, Lord. moments. <laughs> and I've had a lot of them, actually. Uh, when Nathan and I first started dating, <clears throat> he informed me, you know, my daughter lives with me, Allison, and she's I look here right now, she's, she's not going to like you. So you stand might, off this. Yeah. That's not, he didn't even say it that way. But he said, she's not going to like you. She got, I guess, a little burned by some previous, previous. previous Mrs. Cable. Mm. And, um, hold mm. on just a minute. Mm. So good, huh? Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. It's Deep. very good. Delicious. Very delicious. And, you know, I don't know, did you put as much curry in this as you did? Oh, yeah. Really good. Mm -hmm. I thought curry, it would be too hot. The amount of curry, the, that's the, the Miracle Whip and the curry kind of counteract each other. Mm -hmm. So it cuts down, it's not spicy at all. No, it's not. I was expecting it to. You just kind of get a little bit of the curry flavor. Yeah, it's really But good the tanginess thing. of the Miracle Whip cuts it down a lot. Christmas of the broccoli. The Christmas? Christmas. Anyway. Know. Anyway, so he told me that she was not going to like me right away, but give her time. So. I, in my infinite wisdom, knew that she was learning or had learned how to play the guitar. So I went out and bought her some really cool guitar picks before I met her and went over and told. When I got to Nathan's, I did, I will tell you right now, I told a little white lie that day and I said, oh, I just happened to come across these at my house <laughs> and thought you might like to have them. So, and she was... Very, she was receptive and said thank you. I wasn't a rude person. No, no, you weren't ever rude. No, I just, I just knew that I was afraid that my charm and beauty was going to be not going to be enough. So I had to bring her a gift. 
And now I love her. Okay, so the other, another one, this one was very special to me. She probably doesn't even know this one. <clears throat> but the day that she got married was a very special day, obviously. And any of those girls, when they got married, it was a very special day. But I can remember when we were sitting, we'd, all of us had come in, and of course we were waiting, all the bridesmaids and everybody, and we were waiting for Nathan and Allison to come in. And I don't know, something told me to not watch them when they came down the aisle. And instead, I watched her husband, the groom. And I will never, I'm going to cry thinking about it. Because I tell you, I will never forget that day. Because the look on his face was just, I mean, I think he was about ready to cry himself. Mm. And of course, by that time, you know, I had to turn around and look. So that was one of my very, very special moments. And then when she had Liam, was another very special moment. So, see, I'm getting all Liam, who is named after? Liam Edward. Named after Mary Jane's dad and your dad and my grandfather and, and Matthew. Matt. Matthew is Edward. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. He has a very deep heritage name. Yeah, Edward. he does. <laughs> but um, anyway, we're this, glad you tuned in. Here's our I mean, my guest. Whole plate. Here's a guest show. <laughs> Yes, we love this girl. And uh, I hope you guys like it and um, dry it out. Post your pictures on Facebook. <laughs> post your picture if you make it. Post your pictures on Facebook. Tell us, you know, like us, share us, everything. And we're on YouTube too. Yes, we're on YouTube. Go mm -hmm. to uh, Cooking with Nene and, and Murray. Murray on YouTube. Well, we do. We just put, it'll be a day or so. We post, no, uh, it'll be probably late later tonight. I'll yeah, post it on YouTube. Post it on YouTube, and we're also on uh, Instagram too. We are, and, and they'll post the recipe too. Yeah, and we'll post the recipe. But again, there's so many variations. Like you can do so much with this, and it's an easy, you know, mid, you know, uh, come home, yeah. throw it together. Mm -hmm. You can have it ready in an hour, mm -hmm. before, less than an hour, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but uh, appreciate everybody coming out. Yes, we do. It's delicious. If I wish it had smell cam. Smell a vision. Smell a vision. And um, here, let me give this little girl a hug because I'm gonna have to go and turn the camera off. Mm. Thanks for coming on, sweet girl. Thanks for having me. My little Roris. I love her. <laughs> and um, and hey, where are you going? I'm gonna have to do the oh. No. Oh yes. And in. The words of Castlewoods Glenis Boss Gilliland, be somebody. And in the words of Papa Cable, we love you. And, and don't, don't you forget. forget. Thanks, y'all. Thank y'all. See y'all next soon. week. Bye. We may do a little blurb in between, but uh, see you next week at 730 for sure. Love you.